Hi, this is lecture 29. This lecture is going to look at the principles of stair geometry. So stairs are by far the most common way of moving vertically within a building. We use them every day and we take them for granted. And most countries have strict guidelines for the design of stairs, which govern the width, height, depth of the stair itself and its component parts. This lecture is going to look at some of the core dimensions required to create a functional stair. So the standards that we're going to be using are the Scottish Building Regulations and Section 4.3, Stairs and Ramps, gives a mandatory standard which says every building must be designed and constructed in such a way that every level can be reached safely by stairs or ramps. And there's a little note there, 4.3.0, about half of accidents involving falls within and around buildings occur on stairways. So the design of stairways is very important in terms of safety. So there's a number of key terms that we need to understand to be able to design stairs or think about stairs. Looking at a stair in section, the highlighted section in red there, the piece in red, is the tread. So that's the physical surface of the stair that we stand on or that we walk on. And the measurement of the tread is from the front of the nosing, so that's the thing that you, you see right at the front, to the face of the riser at the back. Posing that is the riser itself, which is the vertical board at the back, back of the stair, which closes the gap between the treads. Slightly different from the riser is the rise, and that's the measurement between the top of one tread and the top of the next measured vertically. So that's where the geometry section comes in. And we have a similar measurement that relates to the dimensions of the tread, so which we refer to as the going so this is the measurement between the nosing of one tread and the nosing of the next. Because the nosing can overhang the riser, um, we want to measure that distance there. So it's not going to be the same as the tread depth. And the last piece of geometry we need to think about is the pitch. Um, this is the angle of the stair measured between an imaginary line touching all the nosings and a horizontal surface. So that could be the floor or one of the treads. So in the Scottish Building Regulations, we've got a number of minimums and maximums that we have to deal with. There's a minimum rise uh, measured in millimetres, which is 100 millimetres. The maximum, which is probably more pertinent, is 220 millimetres. And we have a minimum going of 225. There is no maximum, although in practice, when you come to design stairs, um, very long treads tend to be quite difficult to navigate. And the maximum pitch for a private stair is 42 degrees. And the note there about private stair, it's worth thinking about what that means. In the building regulations, they allow for a private stair and I uh, can't quite remember what it's called. Let's call it a public stair. So a private stair would be a stair wholly within a, a house. A public stair would be one that's outside of it. So if you're a uh, postman has to climb a few steps to get to your front door, then they're public. If you go within your house from one level to the next, then that is private. So the maximum rise and minimum going on a private stair should not be used together, as this will result in a pitch greater than the recommended maximum. So if you use those maximum sizes for the height and the minimum sizes for the going to get a very tight stair, they'll actually give you a dimension which doesn't work geometrically. Another check that we need to do on stairs is an aggregate measurement. So this is the aggregate of the going and twice the rise should be at least 550 millimetres and no more than 700 millimetres. So for example, if we looked at a stair provided with the minimum going of 250 millimetres, that would result in rises of at least 150. So we have to work within those two numbers to make sure our stair works geometrically. So another example. A stair with a rise of 180 millimetres and a going of 250 would then be calculated as 250 plus twice the rise, which gives us a number of 610. So we're in between the number of 550 and 700. So that's just like a check measurement that we would do when thinking about stairs. The width of a stair is important as well. And we talk about the clear width or the effective width. That should be wide enough for users to move up and down the stair unhindered. 
And if we are dealing with stairs that give access to a dwelling or a domestic building, such as a block of flats, then people should be able to pass on that flight. And when we're measuring the effective width, we're talking about the distance between handrails. So we could have handrails on both sides. That measurement between the face of each handrail would be the pertinent piece of information. For a private stair, generally we're looking for an effective width of 900 millimetres from one storey to the next, or if it's only going to be serving one room, so that could be a, a loft bedroom as such, or uh, any other room that's not a kitchen or an enhanced apartment, it can be reduced down to 600 millimetres. 600 millimetres is a horrible width for a stair, it's really tight. And for a private stair, if we have a handrail on both sides, then we can reduce the effective width to 800 millimetres. Another important consideration for stairs is the number of rises that are in a flight. Generally, a flight should have not more than 16 risers because it's very easy for people to get, become tired uh, on a long flight of stairs. And down at the bottom end, it's possible that if you have very few steps, then people don't see that there's a change in level. So generally we would say that a flight should have at least three. So between three and 16 should be one flight of stairs. So in conclusion, a couple of key points to note. Basic components of stairs are treads and risers. The measurement of stairs can be made between the rise, vertical between the tread surfaces and the going, horizontal between the nosings. The geometric standards comprising maximum and minimum going and rise contribute to the measurement of the pitch of the stair, so they help figure out the angle. The effective width of the stair is governed by whether it's a private stair or not, and this is usually measured between handrails. And 16 risers is the maximum number of rises in a single flight before we need a landing. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and be sure to have a look at some of the other videos that we've got if you haven't looked at them already. There's also some additional videos that aren't linked onto the course pages which cover detailing and the production of interior drawings.